Now let's talk about linear independence. A set of vectors is linearly independent if it's not linearly dependent. That means a set is linearly independent if it contains no redundancies. There's nothing in the set that I can write as a linear combination of things already in that same set. Formally, a list of vectors v1 to vn in Rp is linearly independent if the only choice of scalars c1 to cn for which 0 is equal to c1 v1 sum up to cn vn is to take all of those scalars equal to 0. Let me just repeat that. A set is linearly independent if the only way we can write the zero vector as a linear combination of vectors in that set is to take all of the coefficients in the combination equal to zero. Let's look at a few sets of vectors in R2 that I claim are linearly independent. In the first example, I'm going to show the set is linearly independent by supposing I can write the zero vector in R2 as some linear combination of R2 vectors. Then I'm going to determine what the coefficients in that combination have to be. The first components must add to zero. We already have a zero in the second vector, but a one in the first. We're going to have to zero that out. Then for the second component, in the same way, we need to place a zero in front of the second vector so that the second components add up to zero. This was the only possible choice of coefficients, so that's how I know this set is linearly independent. I'm going to play the same game with a second set of vectors. Again, suppose we can write the zero vector as some linear combination of our two vectors. Notice that the second vector is the only one that has a non-zero first component, so we're going to have to zero out that too. Once we've done that, we must place a zero in front of the first vector. So now we see this was our only possible set of coefficients. Again, that forces the set to be linearly independent. And this works really nicely for very small sets, but what if we had a larger set or a set of vectors in a larger space? How would we determine if that set is linearly independent? We'll use the following theorem. The columns of a matrix A are linearly independent if and only if x equal to zero is the only solution to our homogeneous system Ax equal to zero. Now this is an if and only if statement, so it goes in both directions. If the columns of A are linearly independent, then x equal to zero must be the only solution to Ax equal to zero. And in the other direction, if we can show that the trivial solution is the only solution to our homogeneous equation, well, then the columns of A must be linearly independent. It's that second back direction that we're going to use in the next example to determine if the columns of a matrix A here are linearly independent. We're going to count to the number of solutions to the corresponding homogeneous system Ax equal to zero. We'll do that by constructing the corresponding augmented matrix and then going through the process of elimination. I'll begin by taking row two and sending it to row two minus two times row one. That's zero, one, minus one, zero. At the same time, I'll send row three to row three minus row one to create a row of all zeros. At this point, I'm going to stop and try and figure out the number of solutions here. Notice that we have two pivots, but our third column is pivot free. That means x3 is a free variable. But now as soon as I have a free variable, that implies we have infinitely many solutions. In particular, we definitely have more than just the trivial solution. So by our theorem, the columns of A are not linearly independent. They are linearly dependent. All right, now let's return to our original question, which was, is this set of vectors linearly independent? But notice that the vectors in this set are the same as the columns of the matrix A that we looked at in the previous example. 
So we've actually already answered this question. This set is not linearly independent. And it motivates the following method of checking for linear independence. We can check if a set V1 to Vn is linearly independent by putting the augmented matrix with columns equal to the vectors in our set, and then the zero vector into echelon form or maybe reduce echelon form. Now, if there's a pivot in every single column, well then the solution is unique and our theorem says that the set is linearly independent. If on the other hand, there is at least one pivot free column, so at least one free variable, then the set is linearly dependent. Let's use this method for a few examples now. I want to determine if this set is linearly independent. I've already taken the vectors in the set and made them the columns of an augmented matrix and then done the row reduction on the corresponding homogeneous system. So I really just need to determine the number of solutions here. Once again, we've got two pivots and a free variable. That implies we've got infinitely many solutions and so our set is linearly dependent. Now I've gone all the way to the reduced echelon form here because we actually get a little bit more information out of this. Notice that the third column in the reduced echelon form is equal to negative two times the first column plus one times the second column. That translates into saying if we take negative two times the first vector from our original set plus one times the second vector, we get the third vector in our set. So not only do we know that the set is linearly dependent, but we get an idea of why. We can see exactly what linear combination of the first two vectors produces the third vector in our set. Let's do one last example. Determine again if our set is linearly independent. Place the vectors into an augmented matrix and then do elimination on that system. This time I've stopped at the echelon form because I can see that we have a pivot in every column and at that point I know that the solution is unique. That means then that the set is linearly independent. Okay, in the next video we're going to look at the geometry of linearly independent sets, so I'll see you back for that.